Hello, I'm James Heyer and welcome to Marketing Dividends where we look every week at the expanded remit of marketing and its contribution to company growth. I'm joined this week by David Scribner, head of Virgin Mobile. That's correct. Hello, James. At Virgin Mobile, what is marketing's contribution to growth? Marketing plays a critical contribution to growth. At the core of what marketing needs to be is about the customer and at Virgin Mobile, that's what we expose is that the marketing department is the one who's the voice of the customer. Without that, we wouldn't be able to get the growth out of existing customers and new customers who want to join Virgin Mobile. So if marketing's the voice of the customer now, what were they previously? I don't think marketing's ever lost being the voice of the customer, but I think in the knowledge age that we're in, there's never been a more important time for them to be the voice of the customer, to be the barometer of what's happening in the market and actually use that to help with business growth. So where are we going? I think there's a really bright future for marketing. I think they really have to grasp that future because never in the history of what we've seen has customers had such a great voice dealing with companies. So if marketing can really tap into that and be the voice of the customer in the C-suite and on the board, we'll see a really great future for marketers. How influential will marketing be in the growth of Virgin Mobile over the next five years? Absolutely critical to the growth of Virgin Mobile. Marketing has always been, in any Virgin company, at the core of what we do because it is a, is a brand based company that really cares about its customers. Purposeful driven, meaning that we really have at the core of what we're doing our people. So it's really important that marketing have a voice and have a senior voice in the organisation. By having that senior voice and using the tools and resources that they now have, through social media, through data, I think that they will be an engine of growth for the company. How do your marketers marry the need for purpose with the need to manage next quarter's dividends? In Virgin, we always talk about people, planet and profit, and they all coexist. So there's no marriage, there's no mutual exclusivity to the two ideas. It actually is about being a commercial entity and driving profit but at the same time thinking about your impact on the planet and thinking about how your people, whether it be your staff or your customers, are having the best experience they can be. David, you're one of the few marketers that have ended up as a chief executive. Does that change how you view the business? I don't have a particular benchmark for those that have come from another discipline, but what I can say is that having been a marketer, it has made a big difference to the way I operate because I've always had the customer at the centre of our thinking and that goes across the whole company. And so when we've made some big strategic decisions in the last 12 months, I think having that customer centricity has really helped us uh, make those decisions. If the chief executive is a marketer, mm -hmm. does that mean there's no room for another marketer on the advisory council? Absolutely not. I think there would always be room for people of marketing background to be in the C-suite and on the boards. And I think what we're seeing in Australia is that I think that if there's a greater opening up for people from marketing backgrounds to be on boards and C-suites, it's actually getting that first marketer on is probably the big issue. David, is there less chance to deliver customer centricity on boards where marketing isn't represented? I think we're reaching a tipping point in Australia with the representation of boards and I think one of the first questions uh, shareholders, CEOs, board members themselves must ask is who is representing the customer in this scenario. And it's not just boards but it's also the C-suite and I think it's important for companies to look at asking that question. And when that question is asked, is that the appropriate person for it and do they have the background? and would they be better served by having somebody with a marketing background. Do you see anyone else staking a claim in that area? No, I don't at the moment. I don't see a lot of, lot of companies with um, board representation with marketers, but what I do see, and I think is very promising, is the growth of areas such as the chief customer officer, and they being direct reports to the CEO, and in that customer officer role, taking care of care, marketing, and other customer interfaces and I think that that's an exciting uh, evolution of what's happening with marketing. We've seen a number of companies talking about chief customer officer and, and I'm trying to unravel the difference between the CMO and that new designation. Can you help us? Yeah, I think so. I think the CMO has a lot about the strategy and I think there's a component about the execution and I think bringing those two 
together gives a holistic approach to how the customer views the brand. So if you see a brand as a uh, customer service agent, and that's got a reporting line that's exactly the same as the people doing the brand advertising, then you're more likely going to get a consistent brand experience. Everyone has an opinion on marketing in the boardroom. Everyone doesn't have an opinion on IT. How does marketing get more gravitas in the boardroom? I think there's an onus on both sides, the, the board members themselves and the marketers. So if I take the marketers side, it really is about data and analytics and how the soft measures that can be in marketing lead to the hard measures around sales and profitability and then presenting that to the board. And then from the board side, I think it's, it's an openness to that. It's an openness to discussing really what's important and what drives business growth rather than what is the television commercial and what should it look like and should be like. So I think that if there's both sides of that equation can really elevate the conversation and get into the area about what we're attempting to do by driving customer behaviour which will lead to growth and how those metrics lead to actual sales and profitability growth is important. So your advice to marketers would be don't show the ads, show the maths. Yes, I think that's really important. I think good marketers will be those that can show and demonstrate that the work that they're doing leads to positive results in the business. Take the time to understand whatever the campaign or execution that you've done, whether it be all the way from social all the way to above the line, how does that link back to results? And being consistent to that and demonstrating that through a quarterly planning process or whatever the rhythm of the business is. It's quite a beast we're asking the marketer to be because the soft and hard metrics can be quite different. I'll mm. take Virgin Mobile and your Doug Pitt campaign. There's a, a big lateral leap that's been made on that campaign, how do you ground it in maths? Pit campaign was excellent for us. We had a 20% share increase on the back of that campaign, but it was always created on a very strategic insight and also what going in with the KPIs that we needed to hit. And that's actually what drove the growth. So the idea, I believe, with marketers having conversations with those that are, that are proving the funding for them is less about the creative and more about what it will achieve. Because everybody, and quite rightly, is entitled to have a comment on the creative. But if the focus can be on the metrics and what it's going to do, then that's a much more robust and rational conversation to have. Previously, companies looked to cut their way to growth, and that's why CFOs became CEOs. We're going to have to grow our way out of this mess. Are you seeing that in your business and across businesses in Australia? I think absolutely. I mean, marketers really have to step up. They've got the opportunity to be the uh, person for change and the person for growth and responsible for that. And I think there's a whole element of it's important that you just don't let the scoreboard operators run the game. You're actually letting the players run the game. And that's where marketing has to step up and get in there, show some gravitas and try to take the mantle for growth and be in a position to do that. I, the reason they're able to do that is marketers have always been at the forefront of change for an organisation and they've always been at the forefront of ideas and trying and attempting to get growth into the market. What we've found post GFC is there's no easy cuts now. There's no easy cuts to make and there's no easy growth that you'll get through the market. You have to be innovative, you have to be ha coming up with ideas to achieve that growth. It feels like you're pushing that responsibility back on marketers to build their own gravitas. What tools or differences are you seeing in your marketers to do that? I'm a passionate believer in the profession of marketing and I love to see marketing across the board grow into, into their roles. What I'm seeing is a lot of marketers taking that mantle of growth now, using their experience, uh, their stakeholder groups from the agencies all the way through to customer advocacy that they're going through social media and other areas to build their own internal knowledge which way they can share that. I think the next step that they have to do is really start creating that linkage between the soft metrics that they've been renowned for into the hard metrics. How are they linking the soft and hard metrics? I think more than ever they're using analytics. There's a way to go on that but what I'm seeing is that the soft metrics that are coming through their campaigns, their execution, they're starting to use analytics to link them to the hard metrics of sales through to profitability and also cost out. So they're really getting an understanding of how the business 
functions rather than just the marketing function. Traditionally, CEOs have gone onto the phone with consultancies to drive growth. You're saying we need to look inward to the marketer. I believe so. I believe more and more that the CEOs need to look to their marketer as the agents of growth. And the reason for that is if you do use an external consulting firm, they leave you at execution. So marketers have that ability not only strategically to think about growth, but through their, and through their partnerships and their teams, execute growth. And I think that is really critical. Also, you get buy-in, so significant staff buy-in. So I think the age, is, age of just relying on consultants as the agents of growth should change to marketers being the agents of growth. With the CEO now calling on the marketer, does that mean the marketer needs to change their networks and their spheres of influence? I think it's important the marketer grows their sphere of influence. I think it has always been easier to, to hang out with your friends, such as the agency, etc. But now it's time to make sure that you have the tough conversations with the finance community, the IT community, the sales community, so that they're on board with the growth mantra of what you're trying to execute. So I think that if they can spend more time with those people rather than the agency, I think that they'll see a, a big growth in their uh, ability to influence at the C-suite level. So you're asking marketers to look inwards to grow their sphere of influence, not outwards, which they might have done traditionally. Absolutely, and when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the CMO. I think the CMO really needs to spend time internally building the sphere of influence, building their peer level relationships to ensure that he can get his, execution of the team out through the door. Leave the agency relationships to skilled individuals that report to the CMO. You have an everyday data relationship with your customers. How does that change your approach to marketing? When you have that wealth of data at your fingertips, there's two things that are really important. You should not operate like, for instance, an FMCG um, company would operate because you have the opportunity to use that data. The other point is using it in a safe and customer friendly sort of way and I think that that is really important from the CMO. In order to be the customer's advocate, you really need to be careful how you use customer data and it needs to be for the benefit of the customer. No doubt that if it drives profit for the corporation that's important, but that, I think that is one of the big things that marketers need to understand when they're looking at big data. In order to capitalise on this data. What resources does the marketer need? They need a, a good support network of agencies that understand how to pull the data and I think that that's probably a foundation but the real layer that will make a difference to it is the skill about the strategy. The person that can understand data and insights and really drive what's the question we're really asking here, what's the area that the customer is really interested in. So with all the data it's actually not about the wealth of data, it's about asking the right questions. We see other companies buying this expertise in. How is Virgin doing this? We're pretty well placed internally. Uh, we've got, I think, a good rhythm and a lot of people that are very uh, familiar with the industry and also very, very familiar with the brand. So I think that they're able to ask those right questions. And the, the wealth you get is the insight that is really important for customers and then turning it into a marketing execution. Is there a chasm happening in marketing where we all used to adhere to the FMCG rules of marketing and now with customer centricity and the wealth of data and tech there's actually been a change. I think we're on a journey with that change. I don't think we've hit the tipping point yet. I think that the way that marketing used to happen, make a big ad, follow, sales will come. It was quite a sexy way of doing business as well. So it's sort of, whereas the data analytics, getting right into it, getting your fingers dirty and finding out where the customer wants to go is a bit different. And then presenting that, then amplifying that maybe through social or social by design and then supporting it with above the line communications is a completely different way to market. And I think a lot of people are on that journey to get to there, but I don't think that's a destination just yet. And it'll probably move again. Richard Branson as the founder of Virgin, a natural marketer himself, does that change the culture of Virgin? I think so. I think what Richard provides is freedom. Freedom for people to really be entrepreneurial uh, and to use the brand in not just playing the game but changing it for good, irrespective of what category we're in. And with the idea that we do focus on people, planet and profit, so our people, 
our customers, making sure the planet we leave it in a better place, but also now recognising we're a commercial entity that makes a profit. I think under those sort of pillars, we're really able to um, flourish with that freedom that Sir Richard provides. We've centred a lot around the customer experience and tech and a, and a lot on data. And my question is, where's the creativity in data? Oh, look, there's, there's so much creativity in data. I mean, really what it should be all about. I mean, if you just think finding the eureka moment uh, that can catapult a company's growth by analysing data is a fantastic opportunity. So I think that uh, there is creativity in that. There, there's smarts that go into it. it. It's different to the creative that you might traditionally associate with marketing, which, which is content. But data has its own parts that can be really creative. What skills or upgrade does the marketer need to be able to start working in this area? There's an element of analytical skills, but also curiosity. So really, and that's sort of probably a love for the industry, a love for where you're working and being really curious. And if the marketer can be really curious, I think data can be a wonderful playground for them to be in. Thank you, David. Thank you, James. Pleasure to be here. And thank you for joining us on Marketing Dividends.